Hello, uh, I'm Chris Hart, uh, Head of Marketing at Manchester University Press, and I'm going to talk to you about how we market books at Manchester University Press, um, using the four P's of marketing uh, as a way to uh, frame the presentation. So first up, so the first up, first P is product, uh, in terms of how marketing interacts with uh, product design. Uh, one of the areas in which marketing does that is looking at the chosen format for a book. Uh, that's mainly done at the commissioning stage, so during a co committee meeting, in which the editors bring their proposals for review uh, from the wider press, but also from our academic committee uh, members. And we, we judge, we look at those proposals uh, and we assess them, uh, looking at which format we think that book will work in, depending on its readership. So some of those uh, formats are listed within this slide. So for instance, we've got monograph editor collection, uh, largely academic books intended for academics, uh, institutional libraries. We've got trade crossover, which is looking at uh, the general reader, specialist reader, but we're looking at distributing those books and selling those books through retail, uh, online sellers like Amazon. We've got audio books, so whether the books will be right for audio, uh, slightly different criteria there than where that book will sell, but it's also looking at the, the style of the book, the flow of the book, and whether it will suit sort of uh, audio, audible uh, audio books and the listening side, and course books as well. So that's looking at uh, books that are intended for teaching purposes in the classroom, so whether that book, so marketing will evaluate a proposal based on its intended um, intended market, intended readership, but also that will determine what marketing approach we take with that book. We look at a proposal again based on the uh, MUP brand, who we are as a publisher and whether it fits with our output and our brand and our identity. Some of those areas, again, looking at the fit with our trade program, our social responsibility program and our mission, uh, our academic program, whether it fits on the academic side, again, peer review has a lot to do there. And the quality side of it. So uh, as an academic press, we want to make sure our, our books are sort of rigorously tested at uh, peer review stage, uh, but also that it has that element of quality that we feel confident to submit it to awards uh, and recognition and reviews as well. So that on the quality side is something that marketing will look at. The packaging side, uh, some of those areas, one of the main areas is cover design. So marketing get involved in cover design. And I've got a few, I've got a, Few examples here of a cover we're currently working on. Uh, as you can see, you've got various different iterations of that design. Marketing will look at that and think through where is this book intended to sell? Who is it for? Is it for the general reader, for the academic? What sort of style do we need to uh, embrace in order to uh, help move that book through uh, those supply channels? Uh, and these are just some examples. So as you can see, you go from the technical through to the more trade orientated, almost like a fiction cover. So packaging is something that marketing get involved with as well. And then supporting our commissioning activities, which is very important, particularly during the pandemic, when we've not had the ability to travel as much and visit conferences and other universities and where our editors would normally have conversations with academics and authors. So marketing have supported editorial through um, email marketing, social media, trying to capture uh, potential authors and their new ideas. So we do that through email marketing, again, social media, through the website, you know, uh, some of the messages on the website and some of the pages pages with regards to how to publish with MUP and why to publish with MUP as well. And some of the, we've run a number of series of online events uh, looking to attract new authors in which our editors will go through uh, the technical side of publishing, but also the reasons for publishing and why you would choose a university press over say a trade publisher or a commercial press. So, the second P is promotion, uh, which marketing are obviously very heavily involved with. Uh, this is one of the areas in which you normally associate with marketing. So publicity is one side. We look to get our, for our books out there, press releases, get them recognised by national, international media, uh, newspapers, radio, podcasts, TV. This is just an example of some of our books, uh, coverage in New Yorker, Guardian, um, the Irish Times, uh, the Times, again, I think that's the New Yorker, New Humanist, Radio 3, Radio 4, The Stylist, The F Word, New Statesman, 
uh, the Guardian. Uh, and it, again, <clears throat> this is just to raise awareness of uh, MEP books, but also helps with the selling process as well, obviously bringing attention to those books. Um, advertising is another area which we cover. So we think carefully about uh, positioning of advertising, where we, uh, where we have those adverts, where we place those adverts, in which publications, depending again on who we, uh, who we expect to buy that book. So these are examples I think that we've had in the TLS recently of some of our books. Um, advertising is very costly as well. So it costs a lot to advertise in something like the TLS. You wanna make sure that uh, it offers a good potential to sell. It's a good return of investment. Awards, we submit book for awards. Uh, we're fortunate this year to win, um, to have our books uh, on the Choice Awards, uh, seven acad academic titles voted for the best titles in 2021, which is, uh, an extreme substantial achievement by the press. But also we were fortunate to have our books listed as the best books in a number of national publications. This is The Guardian, they listed Imperial Nostalgia as one of their best books of 2021. Uh, we Beef, Bible and Bullets, a book on Yair Bolsonaro, uh, the Brazilian president, um, was in the top 10 politics books for financial times. So uh, again, that recognition side, how we get those books recognized. And again, events and conferences is another area in which we, uh, we look to do our promotion. A lot of them are physical events. We run physical events at bookshops, cultural organizations, academic conferences. Uh, the last two years, though, a lot of those events have moved online as we've gone through lockdowns. So this is uh, one of our series of events called Armchair Events. We also run summer festivals in which we promoted our books, very popular. Uh, it was a good way of bringing people to, to those books, but also having allowing the audience the opportunity to sorry, allowing the author the opportunity to to discuss their book more in detail. And social media is another area, uh, social media engagement. So MUP will use Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and recently TikTok, uh, and also YouTube as well. We post our videos, our author events, but also our authors speaking about their their, their books on uh, YouTube. Some of the examples here of. Uh, of social media, of our posting events. I think what's nice here is obviously you've got Satnam Sanger and David Oliswega uh, promoting MUP books on social media. So that, that reach and the engagement beyond just our posting and what that can do through social media is a great advantage. And again, a Hollywood star as well, um, endorsing one of MUP's books. This was unsolicited. It's not something that we went out there and sought. So it's nice to see again, our books getting out there but also uh, having that positive response from celebrities. Uh, we also do email marketing. So email marketing includes sort of monthly newsletters, subject newsletters, uh, newsletters to bookshops, uh, various different audiences in which promotions are wrapped up in emails. This is just the, the header of one of our newsletters that we send out. And we do general author support. So we, we recognize that authors build their profile. They may come to the press with a strong profile or they may be wanting to build a profile through their book. So some of the things that we help them do is build that platform. The messages they want to get across, we help put them into press releases. Again, we help them with events and general outreach, uh, social media, so blogs and the videos, which I've already mentioned we do and podcasts as well. So we have our own podcast series, but we also will pitch to get our authors onto uh, podcasts. So we're looking to, to build their, their profile, particularly if they, I mean, this more in keeping with those authors who come to us with a strong profile and um, need MUP support in terms of helping to build those links. The third P is price. Uh, price is pretty important, pretty important area for marketing. Again, going back to that first slide around the format, largely the format dictates the price. So the academic books tend to be more expensive than trade books, uh, but also the, the buyers. So academic books tend largely to sell to institutional libraries where a trade book you're looking to get that into Waterstones, which will necessitate a lower price. So some of the things we look at when it comes to price is who will buy it and how. Um, so will, buy, will it be the general reader, the academic, as I've just said, and how will it be through a library or will it be through a a bookshop or an online seller like Amazon with much more price sensitive. Uh, we look at comparable prices. So other books similar to the book we're publishing, what are they priced at? We obviously don't want to overprice uh, compared to the, the competition. Neither do we want to underprice either. Um, again, we look at the model for that book. What's the estimated print run? Uh, what would 
which in, again informs distribution. So where are we looking to distribute the book? How many copies do we need to sell? Uh, and uh, just address there the territory split. So are we looking to, what, what will the price be in the US, for example? Uh, if we price a book at 20 pounds, conversion into US dollars is around 30, uh, $30. Uh, is that going to sit within that market? Well, for instance, if we wanted to go down the retail route, will bookshops in America and will customers uh, think that's an acceptable price for the book? Again, these are things we think about. And again, we look at the margin. What's the margin? What's the expected margin on that book that we need to? We're not for profit, so we're not looking at the, the profit margin. We're looking at just uh, the return of investment, making sure there's recoup on the costs uh, of our, on our time. So what are the production costs are some of the things that we'll think about when it comes to pricing, uh, the distribution costs and things like paper um, uh, during Bre after Brexit, one of the fallouts of paper prices have increased and that has a knock on effect to, to the, the RRP of a book. Uh, if the, the costs of production are going up, obviously the price will go up uh, alongside that. Another area that we, we look at is, is the discounting. So when we typically sell to a buyer, uh, whether that's a library, for instance, whether that's a wholesaler, uh, an online seller, a bookshop, they will have a set discount which will sell that book. And typical discounts will range from anywhere from 35% off the RRP to 60% um, uh, in some territories. Uh, and therefore we have to weigh up in that. If you think about that, so, so if we're selling a book for 10 pounds, and we're giving away a 50% discount to a big retailer. We're giving away half of that, that's five pounds. So we're recouping five pounds on that. But in that, we've got to think through production and distribution costs, royalties and marketing and overheads. Uh, and so that soon whittles down per unit to um, a small return. So we've got to think through these things when it comes to the discounts that we offer, uh, making sure also that there's a fair playing ground. You don't want to be offering one account a very large discount. Uh, and a similar sized, uh, one of their competitors, a smaller discount, um, you find disparities in pricing and dis discounts offered on to the, to the customer or the reader. So discount scenario, which we look at as well from a marketing side of what we're pre prepared to give that book. Sometimes if you're launching a retail book, a uh, trade book, you, you, to get that, to get a big selling at the beginning and the run up to publication, you may offer a larger a larger discount in the first, say, three months of publication just to attract that interest. If you get decent sales into a wholesaler, the hope is that they will then advertise that book on to their buyers, to the retail shops. Uh, so, so it can help support the marketing effort as well um, if, you, if you offer a, a decent discount. And again, we think through the international. I think I've mentioned this a few times. So our books are sold uh, internationally in, in, all, in most regions. And we think through the marketing, but also the price inside and the discount and what that will mean. Um, you don't want to be offering one territory too big a discount. Obviously, there's price differences, quite dramatic price differences based on territories. But if you offer a large discount, um, you can end up finding that book sold back into your own territory uh, at a, a vastly reduced price, which will then have a big effect on your ability to sell uh, books in that territory um, with the agreements already in place. And then place is another, so how we, how we sell those books. Um, I think I mentioned this, three, so think about channels and customers, three areas there are retail, uh, libraries and online. Uh, I put this red line in there to demarcate what really happened during the uh, pandemic. When we went into lockdown, a lot of publishers found that libraries and retail, uh, due to lack of footfall going through libraries and, and bookshops, uh, dropped very dramatically and online became the, the big uh the big seller um where you were seeing a lot of books move through a lot of people obviously were going to the likes of amazon bookshop.org uh, book depository and uh, to buy those books i think one thing that that does is it gives a lot of power to those online sellers and what you're really trying to think through is, is parity again um but also what that means once the pandemic and lockdown is over how you uh how you make how you bring back that fairness and you don't have one uh, monopoly one area of strength in terms of your dependency to sell books and again another area that marketing do is, is market research we spend a lot of time doing market research i mentioned that we look at uh, price comparisons 
Um, some of the other, some of the areas of market research we look at are author and stakeholder surveys. So we we regularly survey our authors on satisfaction in certain areas we operate in, whether that's editorial production, but also marketing, to find some of our weaknesses and some of our strong points areas that we can improve on. Again, we do that with our stakeholders, whether that's our printers, our sales reps. Again, that, that, that intelligence that, that gives back the idea is just to find areas of improvement, but also identify areas of strength as well. Uh, we work with PR databases when we do our publicity campaigns. Uh, we we look through these databases to find relevant contacts, uh, uh, newspapers, uh, radio shows, uh, in which we then their contact about the book through press releases. We use Nielsen Bookscan, and Nielsen Bookscan records all the point of sale at uh, retailers and some of the online retailers. And what, what that gives you is an ability to see how many books, not just MUP books, but also other books are published by other publishers, it allows you to see the, 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 the rate of sale for those books and also how many units it's sold and the revenue that it's brought in over a period of time. Again, that's a good way when it comes to evaluating a proposal, thinking through whether, how that proposal will sell and whether it will fit certain areas, for instance, retail. Um, you can look at a similar book and see how that's sold in retail as well to help make that uh, decision. Regular look at industry reports. Industry reports are very important. They cover many areas, not just uh, print book selling, ebook selling, um, audio books, uh, distribution, uh, and it sort of gives you uh, a good window into how the industry itself is operating. Again, some of the challenges they may be facing and some of the opportunities that are out there as well. And the bookseller is another good example of a, uh, a place that we do a lot of our market research. And the bookseller contain, is an industry magazine for publishers. And it contains a lot of information that uh, publishers have provided, just around, again, what they're doing, what's working well for them, uh, different moves, different what books are selling well, et cetera. So the bookseller, and I've provided a link there, it's a good place. You'll be able to find that online if you want to find out more about the publishing industry. Uh, the other area that I said I'll go into uh, briefly is uh, if I was a new author and I was approaching a press, what would I be thinking of? What if I was, and what would the marketing team be? How would I appeal to the marketing team of that press if it came to them looking through my proposal and evaluating my um, potential as an author for their list? Uh, as I've put there, they'll be looking at the three three main areas. So those will be publicity, events, and communications. So how will you as an author support their uh, activities in those three areas? And I suggest that I think that for a new author, it would be uh, it would be strong if you were participating already within publicity, whether that you were writing book reviews, uh, opinion pieces in publications and websites relevant to your area of writing, so that you were developing that voice and that, those networks and that's contacts. Again, from the event side, I'd recommend that you connect with your local bookshop and library. That outreach is a great way of, of just making friends. So for instance, if you were to launch your book, they'd probably be more friendly when it came to the idea of running an event with, uh, with yourself. And then on the communication side, you know, being active on social media, um, being able to create a persona and a character on there. I know a lot of people, uh, avoid social media because it can be quite toxic at times. But I, I've seen authors create um, personas and characters in which they can present this idea of who they are as an author. And that's a good way of sort of deflecting that personal side on social media. And again, writing a blog, a regular blog is a good way. It just again, helps develop that profile and helps develop um, contacts and your voice as well as an author. But I'd say that the biggest area is, is, is just that building the network, people who will support you, and advise you and help you in you with you with your uh, writing and as you attempt to build your profile as a new author uh, these are people who will offer endorsements but also be able to guide you be able to read your book and help shape it from an editorial standpoint as well and that's it that's my presentation uh thanks very much for for listening uh, if you've got any questions um i'm chris hart head of marketing at manchester university press you look on our website you'll be able to find my contact information feel free to drop me an email uh, for any questions and I'll, I'll hopefully get back to you as soon as possible all right thanks very much bye bye